I got to love weaving uh, long ago in school, where we, it was in the, after the war time, and um, we had just little, simple, little primitive frames. And we had a lovely teacher. She loved weaving and wool craft, and she showed us a little thing how we can make a scarf, making little pieces and um, stitch it together. And we were so proud of our products. But then, how life goes, you had a lovely hobby in those years, and then um, you marry, you have children, and everyone knows how busy you are, you are then, and then the children are gone, and the grandchildren are grown up, and all of a sudden, you have the greatest freedom ever. Totally independent, free as a butterfly, and you can go back to all the lovely things you used to love. So I came across um, the Handweavers Guild in Cork and then um, the Cork Textiles Network and there I was really in my element. And I started just with little things from the pawn shop picture frames and this is the one from last year. And you know, you start. Sometimes you have a, have a, a more structured idea and sometimes I was thinking it was Easter time, it was lovely weather, I was thinking of flowers. And um, I have always a bits box where I keep little pieces um, like this. And I put them on a tray. Yeah, here's my bits box. See? So I pick out the pieces and put them on a tray. And look at the colors. And then you start. And all of a sudden you don't even think anymore. And so that was Easter, with all the flowers and so on. Then it was in a corner until Christmas. And then I got it out and I said, oh, it looks not so different. Now it's not springtime anymore, it's not Easter, no flowers, now it's Christmas time. And then everything calmed. So I said, maybe it was a valley in the mountains. And now I go up and make mountains and the sky is a bit gray. So. <laughs> This is the piece from last year. This, this, something like this, you can only do on a big loom, of course. And um, you can have, this is very handy because it doesn't take too much space. It's a standing loom. The other ones, the floor table looms, are taking much more space away. So, but I'm very happy with this one. I like it. It's not so posh and not so polished. It has a bit of a character, this one. It's a bit wobbly. <laughs> and you beat it down. And maybe the banging is not so meditative. <laughs> there are quicker ways with other shuttles, but um, I manage this way. Upstairs, the other loom, I have, I want, I have so many different colors and I want to use five, six strands and just mix loads of colors. To work with colors is just fantastic. I stopped buying wool now because I got a lot of wool. Where was it? In Yall. There was a carpet factory, remember? In Yall. So, and they were closing down, so I took my shopping trolley and went over. And they filled the whole trolley with the uh, leftovers here, the small, you know. Look, these are hand spun and hand dyed in this little bag here. Yeah, that's very different wool. This is precious. I use this one for a very special tapestry. It would be a shame to mix, mix the hand spun and hand dyed wool with the other, you know, so I keep it all separate. And I will use it on the smaller frames. This wool, for example, is such a, not a nice color, but it's fantastic rug wool. So you could mix it, you know, with other colors. And then you have a good quality rug. Some days you feel like working downstairs, some 
time you feel like working on the little frames and, and sometimes I close the door and no telephone, no noise up here and I go here. And um, you learn it from the others. You only need to love it. When you really like it, you're, you can do it. If you have the advantage like I have now, in my old age, that I can just use it as a hobby and really enjoy it. And with all the lovely people around, I mean, the Cork Textile Network is a fantastic idea. It's such a fantastic, all the, the quilters, the weavers, the um, embroiders, everyone under one umbrella. The politicians could learn something from us. Ha <laughs> ha.